Should fully vaccinated people be exempt from state border closures? I hope that we can uh, have a broad reopening uh, in a relatively orderly way once we, uh, once we get uh, to, that, uh, to that latter stage of the vaccine rollout. So does this quarantine facility mean that Victoria can take more returning Australians? Yes, it does, Laura. So uh, this was... The federal government will sign a formal agreement today. It's expected for a 500-bed quarantine hub at Avalon Airport. And the federal government will implement an emergency payment scheme to help support workers affected by COVID lockdowns. The Finance Minister, Simon Birmingham, joins me live now from Adelaide. Thanks so much for your time. Looks like you've bowed to pressure on two fronts here. Hello, Laura. Well, it's good to be with you. Uh, look, in terms of uh, helping hand to Victorians and making sure assistance is, is there, this is what we've done right throughout the pandemic in, uh, in relation to making sure that we respond to circumstances. This is the first uh, lockdown running for more than a week's duration we've had since, uh, since we uh, took uh, the steps out of the nationwide support programs like JobKeeper. And so this is an important assistance package for retail workers, hospitality workers, those who might find themselves uh, facing uh, a lockdown stretching beyond one week uh, and who need that bit of financial assistance because their hours have been reduced to zero uh, and they may not be seeing pay in that regard. So um, uh, we've, uh, we've responded there. We're taking that through National Cabinet so that it then stands uh, as a consistent program available right across the nation for, uh, for any future occurrences that may happen in a, in a similar way. Because that is the uncertainty that we're dealing with and it's uncertainty that we also recognise has a long way ahead of it as well in terms of handling this pandemic and potentially other threats in the future, which is uh, where uh, we've been working with Victoria for some weeks now yep. on their proposal for uh, additional facilities. Uh, and I'm very pleased that uh, we've now been able to sign a memorandum of understanding between the federal government and the Victorian government uh, that enables us to proceed through uh, to, uh, to hopefully see that facility built. So does this quarantine facility mean that Victoria can take more returning Australians? Yes, it does, Laura. So uh, this was the proposal Victoria put to us uh, some weeks ago now that they wanted to see the facility established, uh, that they wanted the Commonwealth to uh, fund its construction and own the facility, but that they would operate and run the facility and that it would provide additional quarantine places uh, for returning Australians and essential arrivals into Australia. And they're all the criteria against which we're working. Uh, that's what the MOU is based upon, uh, those principles that, uh, that we uh, will work with Victoria in terms of building it. We will fund the construction. The Commonwealth will own it over the long run. Uh, Victoria will operate it uh, and it will provide uh, additional places. Well, does this mean, because Victoria has from time to time stopped taking overseas arrivals full stop, does this mean once this quarantine facility is up and running, it will not be able to do that? It will have to take whatever uh, returning Australians would be able to fill that facility at Avalon? Clearly, uh, clearly, if there are extreme circumstances that occur, uh, then we'd work through those sensibly with the Victorian government in the future. Uh, but our expectation is that, uh, that Victoria uh, honour its word. Uh, they made this proposal as a facility that would take additional Australians over and above those through the Medi Hotel system. Uh, and so that's precisely the type of agreement that we're entering, entering into with Victoria and we expect that that's how it will operate into the future. OK, well, we were told this week that this lockdown in Victoria is because of a beast of a strain, quote unquote. Now there's two false positives. Is the lockdown, the extent of it, still justified? That's for uh, Victoria and their health authorities to, uh, to explain. Uh, when they're running 50,000 uh, tests per day uh, and the like, uh, there will be occasional false positives, so that's understandable. Uh, but they need, to, uh, they need to make sure that they reassess in light of new evidence and new information uh, and then explain to the Victorian people clearly uh, if they're maintaining current mm -hmm. settings, why that's the case, if there's room for any change equally, why that's the case. Uh, if over coming days uh, case numbers are such that, uh, that with these uh, bits of new information and case numbers coming through in coming days enable Victoria to perhaps ease some of the lockdown restrictions earlier, mm. uh, to let more people back to work or back to school or to narrow further the, uh, the reach and scope of the lockdown, then I know that would be very, very welcome. But it has to be informed by the health advice. Should fully vaccinated people 
be exempt from state border closures? Uh, well, at present, uh, the evidence is still uh, is still um, uh, unclear as to the extent to which vaccination prevents transmission. Uh, we know that vaccination works incredibly well in terms of preventing serious illness, uh, and that is why everybody should heed the advice and get vaccinated as quickly as they're eligible and as quickly as they can. Uh, and it's wonderful to see that in the past 10 days, more than 1 million doses uh, have been administered mm. across Australia, and uh, and uh, we want to see that uh, that public enthusiasm for vaccination continue and continue strongly. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of those questions of, uh, of whether having a vaccine um, reduces transmission. The international evidence says that it does, but there's a wide range to, to the extent that it does. And that's where um, it's understandable that right now, um, uh, where it may only reduce transmission by 30 or so percent, according to some studies, uh, that obviously still poses a fairly high risk, particularly when you're dealing with potentially more highly contagious variants uh, from other parts of the world. Well, business, agriculture, tourism, industry leaders today are begging for a clearer roadmap on international borders. So the first question is, what proportion of the population needs to be vaccinated before that can happen? Any kind of overseas travel without these really strict exemptions. Do you have a read on that? We are still quite some distance from uh, from that, Laura, and we'll take those decisions based on the best health advice at the time when we get to having uh, a vaccine program that is fully available to all Australians uh, and where we've got widespread take-up. And at that stage, we'll then have a look at what variants exist around the world, what the evidence is in relation to transmission, what the threats are. Uh, I hope that we can uh, have a broad reopening uh, in a relatively orderly way once we uh, once we get uh, to that uh, to that latter stage of the vaccine rollout, but to hypothesise right now uh, would really be to uh, to base it uh, on uh, on evidence that hasn't been fully considered because uh, because we do know that it keeps changing in terms of the advice and the information around the world, uh, and we want to rely on the most up to date, mm. the most accurate evidence at the time we make those decisions. Well, the Prime Minister is travelling overseas next week. He's off to the G7. He'll be going to Singapore and Europe. Isn't he demonstrating that overseas travel is necessary and vaccines work? Well, he's demonstrating that overseas travel in, uh, in exceptional circumstances is necessary and we have enabled exceptional circumstances travel for many Australian businesses as well as many other individuals uh, where they have a very strong case. And in this instance, uh, the Prime Minister, having been invited uh, to the G7, uh, has an opportunity for, uh, for his first dialogue with uh, a number of world leaders in a long period of time to confront some very significant issues, COVID-related issues, but also other strategic issues of importance to international security and to the world economy, uh, as well as dealing with, uh, with topics uh, like climate change. And so uh, I think people would accept that uh, uh, this is uh, an exceptional opportunity for the Prime Minister. Australia doesn't usually get invited to G7 meetings, uh, and so he's seizing that. Yes, in terms of vaccines, it, uh, it does show a confidence that, uh, uh, that exposure to the virus will not necessarily mean uh, that somebody gets sick. Uh, indeed, uh, you, the vaccine dramatically reduces those chances of serious illness. And, uh, and so that's the protection that uh, the Prime Minister takes. Um, but he will still have to go through uh, quarantine and those at sorts home. of arrangements like any other returning Australians. At, at home, which is nice. Well, he still still has to go through uh, that quarantine, that expectation in terms of uh, of uh, the risk that even though he's been vaccinated, mm. uh, he could still be carrying and therefore transmit the virus. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point though, isn't it? If you are vaccinated, maybe home quarantine is a good idea. Well, look, those uh, those things as we get more information, uh, will uh, will be able to be considered. Um, everybody knows that the prime minister is uh, is under. Uh, plenty of scrutiny uh, and, of course, uh, his, uh, his home as such is, uh, is well secured as well. So uh, yep. people can have confidence he won't be, uh, be leaving. And